Multiple viewpoint. Not narrator omniscient, but through the eyes of each major character inside each. Do you follow that? That means a viewpoint is you're seeing the world through that particular character's eyes and emotions. Another way to look at it is as if writing separate novels about each character in close third, and then their stories intersect at dramatic moments. It's an interesting way to look at it, isn't it? It took me a while to come up with this idea. It's hard to explain multiple viewpoints, and they're not always easy to write. But why, why should you strive for it, in a, in a thriller particularly? Because multiple viewpoint gives a sense of sprawl, of momentousness, of bigness, that this is a worthy story. This is worth reading because it encompasses these various characters' um, lives at a very dicey time, not only in their life, but in history. Also, multiple viewpoint is very useful in involving the reader more deeply. Readers will make an emotional commitment to characters when they're inside the character's head. I used to be an utter purist. I started out as a literary writer. This, my friends give me a hard time about this, but I actually did. I pu published literary short stories, and then I went straight to writing male pulps. After that, they started teasing me about that. You know, you can't win, right? 180 degrees. But even when I was doing the male pulps, I was an absolute, I was rigid about viewpoint. It was single viewpoint, close third. Narrator, omniscient voice, occasionally but mostly third, all the way through. I, you know, I came out of a literary background, and that's what we were taught, and I believed it hook, line, and sinker. Remember that old phrase, question authority? I highly recommend it. It's important you learn all of the rules, because then you can go ahead and break them, and you must break them if you're gonna break any new ground. If you're gonna do anything really special, you've got to be able to break the rules. But you have to do it well, so you can get away with it. So anyway, so then I, I realized that there was a lot of literature out there that didn't necessarily use single viewpoint, and so I started experimenting, and I allowed myself to change to use a different viewpoint, chapter by chapter. Well, that of course broke down the barriers a little bit, and then I decided, well, I kind of like this. I, I like the effect of this, so I decided to just do it scene by scene. That I would allow myself to switch viewpoint from one scene to the next if if it was if the story called for it, and then I read. Uh, Norman Mailer's Executioner's Song. And he was switching viewpoint, paragraph to paragraph, and it was so gripping. I said, I don't care about the rules. I'm going to do what I think will work best so that the reader gets the biggest, most satisfying experience possible. And that's when I just threw all the rule books out and I just started writing for, writing the story, the power of the story. Put that on your lampshades or your bulletin board, the power of the story, because that's what the reader is interested in. Okay, so why? Why does this work? When you are inside someone's head and you're living their experience, if the writer is doing his or her job well, then you really are living that experience. You're seeing that story, you're feeling that story, it's in your gut, you're sweating, you're glued to the page. So if you put Two reader, two, uh, and you're very, be very careful about your viewpoint characters. I, I am, I want you to be two because you can have way too many. Choose your hero and or your heroine, depending if you have one, something, you know, a lot of books now have uh, a male, female lead characters. They should each have their own viewpoint, unless there's another reason to not. And the villain should have a viewpoint and then carefully figure out which others of your major characters should have a viewpoint. Because you have, if you have too many, it's hard on the readers, especially in a thriller where there can be a lot of characters. It's a decision that you will have to make on your own. I'm just giving you advice at this point. So what happens if you have a scene of confrontation between your hero and your villain? And you tell it from both viewpoints. And this is one of the the emotional effects that it had on me, and I've talked to other people and they seem to find it to be true for them too. If you are in the head of both characters, in the heads of both characters, the reader unconsciously finds himself rooting for the villain when he's reading the villain's lines. 
because you are emotionally invested. You don't like this guy. You don't. You know he's bad, he's evil, he's terrible, etc. But you see, if you've made a real human being, he's not cardboard. And you also see that he has hopes and dreams. Even though you may not like those hopes and dreams, you will, on an unconscious level, relate. So that when you have this confrontation between the two, that feeling will be there, even though you want the, the hero to win. If once you set up that kind of an exchange on a page, the reader will be so deeply involved that they won't want to quit. They won't be able to quit. They will have to find out what's going to happen next. So much about any kind of, I mean, there are all kinds of novels. I've written a lot of different kinds of, of work myself. And there's a, there are marvelous ways to look at, at literature. But today we're talking about thrillers. And this, for the thriller audience, for people who love them, this is something that, that they really groove on. And I think as authors, it's our job to, as much as possible, allow them this feeling of, of being on the inner circle and being part of the story by allowing them to feel the emotions that everybody's, you know, that the two people are feeling at these very uh, crisis times. Now, you don't have to do it every time. I'm not suggesting that either. This is a lot of, it's up to the author. It's simply a tool I'm telling you about, and how you use it, whether you use it, is really up to you. It has to be up to you. It depends on what story you're telling.